Hi, I'm Herb Baker, and today I want to talk to you about the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, the big pool near the Johnson Space Center where astronauts train underwater for future spacewalks. When I worked at the Johnson Space Center as manager of the Operations Support Office, I supported the Flight Operations Directorate, which included mission control, the astronaut office, uh, astronaut training, and so I had access to some of those restricted areas, and I gave a lot of tours, tours of uh, the space station mission control, the historic Apollo mission control, the space vehicle mock-up facility, and of course, my favorite place to take visitors was the neutral buoyancy lab. There is an, an upstairs viewing area, but it's much more fun to get to take guests down on the pool deck, but you had to get special clearance to do that. And I was able to uh, get a, a pool deck pass, and even after I retired, I, I kept my pool deck pass. I just couldn't, couldn't give it back, <laughs> even though I can't use it anymore. NBL is located adjacent to Ellington Airport uh, in the southern part of Houston and is about five miles from the Johnson Space Center. It began operations in 1996 and is one of the largest indoor pools in the world. It's 202 feet long, uh, 102 feet wide, and 40 feet deep, uh, 20 feet above ground and 20 feet below ground holds 6.2 million gallons of water and they keep it at about 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit so the uh, astronauts and divers can remain comfortable. It loses 500 gallons a week uh, in evaporation which has to be replaced of course and when it was originally built it took 500 full cement trucks to pour the foundation which was lined up for miles and caused an awful traffic jam, as you can imagine. The facility that houses the NBL is called the Sonny Carter Training Facility, named after Sonny Carter, a physician, chemist, test pilot, aviator, professional soccer player, and astronaut. He was so accomplished that NASA actually asked him to apply to be an astronaut. <laughs> it's funny. I heard at one point someone say that uh, he was so talented that it, he didn't even have to apply to be an astronaut. So I, I checked on that, and it turned out that's not quite true. Uh, he did have to apply, but NASA asked him to apply. He did get to fly once on STS-33, but just about a year and a half later, while he was training for his next flight, he died tragically in a commercial airplane crash at age 43. And one of the reasons they named the facility after him is because he developed a lot of the current spacewalking techniques used today by astronauts. The astronauts spend about seven hours in the pool for every one hour that they will spend doing an actual spacewalk on a mission. And the spacesuits they wear in the pool are real spacesuits. They've just been decommissioned and are no longer used on actual spacewalks anymore. And the suits with the backpack attached weigh almost 300 pounds. As you can see, a uh, mock-up of the entire International Space Station, except for the Russian segment, is sunk underwater at the bottom of the pool. The outside of the mock-ups are very high fidelity, but the insides are empty. Simulating weightlessness in the pool is the closest you can actually get to simulating an actual spacewalk on orbit. After the astronauts get in the water, weights are either added or removed from their suit so that they don't float to the top or sink to the bottom, so they become neutrally buoyant, hence the name of the facility. I, I had a chance to talk with Jasmine Mugbelli, one of the new astronauts uh, recently, about getting the weight adjusted in the water, and she told me that the first time she did a dive, it took so long to get it right that she commented to the divers that she was afraid she wasn't going to have time to finish her dive. 
And she did say that uh, uh, they still have to make minor adjustments even after that first dive, every time they get in the water because they may have gained or lost weight or they may be carrying different tools, but it's much quicker process than it was that first time. Of course, being in the water is not exactly like being in space. In space, there's no sense of up or down and there's no gravity. So if you are upside down in space, all of the blood doesn't rush to your head like it does on Earth. And there's no resistance to movement in space like there is in the water with the, the water drag you get if you try to move your arms or legs or body. But it's, it's the best they've uh, got. When the astronauts need to move in the pool, they can't swim in the suits. So unless they've, they're going a short distance and have something like a handrail to grab onto, the divers move them from one place to another. And the astronauts dive in pairs, just like they do the real spacewalks. One astronaut always has a red band around one of their legs of their suit so they can tell who is who visually. Both astronauts have at least four divers with them. Two safety divers, one with a camera so they can be watched from the control room through a closed circuit TV system, and a utility diver to help them with various tasks. They also have hand signals they can use in case of a problem with their communication equipment. The training dives can last six to eight hours each, just like a real spacewalk, and the, the divers can only be down in the water for about four hours at a time. So uh, for every training event, about halfway through, they do change out uh, with a new uh, crew of divers. But my favorite thing about visiting the NBL is if you time it right and either the morning when they're getting in the water or in the afternoon when they're getting out of the water and you get to see that process, that's just amazing to watch. You have to sit down on the pool deck and wiggle into the lower torso assembly. It takes several people to help the astronauts get into their suit and get the suit locked together and get their gloves and helmet on. The suit is so heavy with the backpack that the hard upper torso is strapped to a platform where the astronauts have to crawl up into it. They are both then lowered into the pool on the platform with a crane where divers are waiting to disconnect them and move them to wherever they need to go. Of course, just like Real spacewalks, they are in the suit so long that they have to wear diapers, or as they prefer to call them, mags, maximum absorbency garments. The mags can only handle number one, uh, not number two, by the way, so they're careful about what they eat before they go into the pool. Uh, coming out of the pool is just the reverse of going in. The divers take the astronaut back to the platform, hook them up, and they're lifted back up to the deck where they have help getting out of their suits. They take everything off except the liquid cooling and ventilation garment, which regulates their body temperature while they're in the pool. On one of my tours, we happened to be there just as Jessica Meir and Mike Barrett were coming out of the water. And Jessica gave us a wave as she walked back to the uh, dressing area. You can see that there's a yellow stripe around the edge of the pool. And even if you're allowed on the deck, you have to stay behind that yellow stripe, unless you're a diver or an astronaut that's going in the water. And it's hard to tell, but the deck inside that yellow stripe is tilted slightly downwards toward the water so that any water that collects there will drain back into the pool. So that could be very dangerous if it were wet and you stepped there, you could find yourself slipping down into the water. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the NBL. Thanks for watching.